Hello everybody and welcome to part 20 of the Blender 2.80 Absolute Beginners course. And in this tutorial part we will create this amazing scene and this amazing creature which is called a gondola. You might be familiar with this meme, it's actually my favorite meme of all time. I'm gonna quote its description. Gondola. Uh, gondolas are relaxed, harmless creatures that observe the environment. They rarely interfere anything, but just keep observing. They rarely talk, they just look around and smile. This makes them very different from other creatures. Um, yeah, I know, I know it's cringy and cheese what I just did, but I think these kind of scenes are pretty good exercises for what we have just learned throughout the past 19 videos. The gondola is created using the subdivision modeling technique. As you can see when I zoom in, it has this great smooth detail added into it. We have this nice campfire here in the mountain in the back. So again, this video will be quite long. I really hope you're gonna stick out throughout the entire video. Um, I wish you good luck in following and creating your own gondola. Remember you can download it as a free 3D model from our choco store. And yeah, right now I want to introduce you to jumping into it with me and creating this amazing scene in Blender 2.80. I'm gonna start working on my gondola character by usually deleting everything and you can see in this bottom right corner, we have the shortcuts display. It's a feature that some people requested for me to add to more advanced videos. So let me know in the comments if you find it useful. But right now we will just move in into modeling. So I'm dragging and dropping the reference of my gondola character to the viewport. And when I press N key, you remember from the previous video, we can we should zero everything here, but we can also use two or three new shortcuts for that. So when I press Alt R, you can see the rotation was zeroed completely. And when I press Alt G, the location is now zeroed. So if I also press Alt S, you can see the scale goes back to the defaults. So a pretty useful uh, things. It's the same as R is for rotation, G is for grabbing and S is for scaling. So holding Alt with all of those shortcuts will zero the values here. So I'm gonna now set up my viewport for work. Again, same things as in previous video. So I'm holding my control key, left mouse button to rotate the reference by 90 degrees. I reduce the transparency to 0.3 and I'm gonna move it just a little bit above the X axis so the legs of our character, of our gondola are stand, standing like on the floor. And I'm gonna start by adding a plane. You can see it here, it's not that much visible, so I'm gonna rotate it by 90 degrees in the X axis and I'm gonna just move it forward a little bit so those two objects don't overlay that much. Now I'm scaling it down as you can see and matching the outer uh, edges of the leg. I'm gonna enter the edit mode right now, switch to the wireframe view and start, well, drawing my 3D, uh, so far it's 2D, so I'm gonna draw my object around what I see in the reference. I'm gonna extrude here I'm also gonna extrude here and I'm gonna add two edge loops just like this, select this edge here and create this very, well, bumpy, edgy leg as for now, but later we are gonna add a subdivision modifier and everything's gonna smooth out very, very nicely. So let's now keep on modeling. I'm gonna select those two edges here and extrude them up to this edge more or less. I'm gonna select this vertex like that. I'm gonna extrude these two as well. Now these two somewhere around the middle, let's say around the nose of our character. I'm gonna add one or two, let's say two extra edge loops here and move them manually 
so they kind of match the curvature we have here we can also move this edge just a little bit up and yeah make this shape just a little bit more proportional yeah perhaps we can also move this down a little bit like that and keep it as it is now i'm gonna keep on extruding upwards then i reach this area here and with these two vertices selected i'm gonna extrude them so we have this area blank and now we can speed up the work. We could obviously extrude just a vertex like that. It's actually not that, it's not a bad idea, but let's try something a little bit more creative. So I'm gonna focus my 3D cursor around this area and I'm gonna add a circle. It's created here. I'm gonna rotate it within the X axis again by 90 degrees. And you can see I will scale it down and try to recreate this curvature using a circle but first I need to delete those unnecessary vertices so you can see I disconnected this part from the rest of the newly added, newly added circle sorry and now I'm pressing the L key to select it X to delete and that, let's now use this object and try to match its shape so we save ourselves just a little bit of work. If I scale it within the X axis, you can see this is what's happening. So let's rotate it just a little bit like this, like that. Again, it's similar as with the pawn in the previous video. We just, well, model things around. So you can see now I'm just merging those two vertices at the last one I've selected. And we have this bumpy shape, so again, we need to um, adjust it by hand a little bit. So you could see I, I could have extruded that manually from the very beginning. I just wanted to show you a little bit different way, a little bit different approach, which sometimes it's actually useful. I'm gonna add one more edge loop here and move this uh, vertex down just a little bit so we have a bit more curvature here. Now I will select all of these vertices except except of this one. I'm gonna extrude, scale down just so we know what's happening. And now I'm gonna press shift, select the last one, uh, the last vertex here, Alt M, and merge at last. So we have this shape around this area. Well, oh, actually finished. So as you can see, we now have a shape which could be actually copied. I will do, th do this in the object mode and mirrored. So we have our character, well, almost entirely done right now, except of the leg here. So let's do this correctly. Let's go back to the edit mode. I'm gonna select this entire edge loop here. I'm gonna center my 3D cursor around it. Now I'm gonna press A to select everything, change the pivot point to 3D cursor. I'm gonna press Shift D to delete, uh, sorry, to duplicate, escape. Now Control M and X to mirror everything we have. So, still, when I press L, as you remember, those two objects are not joined together. So I'm gonna select everything by pressing A in the vertex mode here I'm gonna right click and remove doubles so now we know our shape is joined and connected as a single mesh so let's now very quickly fix the feet the foot uh, problem we have here I'm gonna select these three faces and press the Y key meaning I have separated this object from the rest of the model. Um, I don't know why my gizmo... Ah, okay, it's there. So we need to change the pivot point to the median, for example. And I'm gonna press Ctrl M again to mirror this element within the X axis, and I'm gonna move it here. Now, since we have three, or one, two, three, four vertices here, we would want to match with the ones here. You might think how we can do this. Should we hand merge all of them together? 
and we need to learn another tool in this video. So, but it's pretty easy and yet very useful. So you can see we have this icon here. If I turn it on and select every, anything from here, the behavior of my selection within the viewport will change. So it's called a snapping tool, as you can see when highlighted, also shift tab to activate and deactivate. And the default snapping option is an increment. So when I move my object around right now, you can see it jumps within the distance of a grid I have visible in the viewport. If I zoom out and move it, it jumps further uh, away. If I zoom out even more, it jumps, well, even further. So it always snaps to the uh, lowest level of grid visible. You can see right now we have this gray line here, but also this shaded gray line uh, displaying the denser grid. So the object automatically snaps, uh, snaps to it. But what we want to do is actually snapping to vertex. So if I turn this on and move my cursor around this area and move it around this vertex, you can see we have snapped it perfectly. So let's do it like this. And again, select everything, right click, remove doubles. So I want to disable the snap tool for now. So it doesn't interfere with what we do. And here we have to cover one month, one more theoretical well, aspect of 3D modeling. So with my model visible right now, you don't seem to notice anything well wrong or strange about around it. But if we go, to the overlays and we have to do this in the edit mode actually. So if we go here and click the overlays icon, you can see we have multiple options to choose from. If we select faces, go to the overlays and let's say switch on these uh, settings here, we can see the edge length, face area and so on. Pretty useful actually for certain well uses. But what we are looking for is this icon, well, this checker here, which is called face orientation. So if we turn it on, you can see we have some of the faces marked as blue and some of them marked as red. And what it means, uh, when you add a plane object to Blender, Blender needs to know what's the top and what's the bottom part of this object. So we can theoretically assume that the blue part is the, let's say, upper part of the face and uh, bottom part is red. So it's like a paper, more or less. When you take a paper sheet, you can define that one part is, well, bottom and the other part is uh, up, upper part. So in Blender, if we mirror an object, the orientation, I'm gonna do, that, do this right now, uh, Control M, X, the face orientation changes. So since we have done this to our geometry, we now have multiple directions within the one mesh. And that's not good when 3D modeling, and I don't, don't wanna get it into many details right now, but what you want to do at this point is selecting everything and using the Shift N shortcut, which is states here, make normal consistent. So you can switch between inside outside here, but what we want to have is this uniform um, mesh display mesh color when we have this face orientation uh, option enabled here. So once we do that, sometimes you might just double check if everything is set up correctly, but once we do that, we can switch this off and get back to modeling. So at this point, we could already start adding the details like the eyes, uh, the mustache and the mouth of the creature, but we still have this very, well, boring color set up in the viewport as a default material. So let's try to fine tune that a little bit. I'm gonna add a new material here and name it a color, zero, one. And I would like to use, I'm gonna hide my model temporarily. I would like to use the color we have here on in this, well, reference. So how we can do that? Well, the way I'm personally doing that is using an external application like Photoshop. You can also use GIMP for that. And I'm simply dragging and dropping my reference here. So once I do that, you can select a brush tool. And when you press Alt key, 
you can have the uh, you you will see this color picker tool available so when i click within the body of my creature i have its color selected now i click on this color here and it will have my color picker will settings available and i need to copy this hashtag value from here so i'm going to press ctrl c hit ok go back to blender and now within the color settings um, let me I unhide my model. We can now paste this hash value within the hex w uh, window here. So let's do it. And you can see the color is now copied directly from Photoshop to Blender. So let's do it here as a viewport display. And now we can see our creature starts looking as it should. So let's very quickly add one more color, the black one. I'm going to call it color two. And here we don't need to use a color picker. As a main color, I'm going to use pretty dark values like 0 0.05. But as a viewport display, just remember not to use that really dark values because otherwise you won't see much in the viewport because you can see our lines, vertices and everything is also black. So once you set up this uh, viewport display for this color too dark, it will be hard for you to work within, well, the viewport. So with this color now added, let me get back to the edit mode. I'm going to add another circle here, rotate it within the X axis by 90 degrees, scale down. I'm going to move it around the eye area, extrude once like that so I have a boundary uh, for my subdivision modifier which we'll add later a detail from the previous video and I'm now I'm gonna merge everything at center so this is my eye let's L click on it and apply a new color so I'm gonna I'm, I'm moving it a little bit forward so again it's uh, yeah it looks a little bit better we will also extrude it and we can now either mirror it using the 3D cursor or simply hand copy and will match manually. It still looks pretty good in my opinion. Um, yeah, what we can do now is also creating this nice black boundary around our body, uh, around the gondola's body. So in order to do that, I'm gonna select this element only. Now with, within the face mode here, I'm going to press Ctrl F and select the Inset Faces tool. So once I do that, you can see this kind of effect is happening. I'm going to apply by left clicking, go back to the solid view. And you can see we have this new raw of faces created. Within the tool opened here, I'm going to uh, select outer here like this. So the newly created faces are now selected for us. And we can still um, fine tune and adjust the boundary using the slider. I think it's actually pretty good. So let's use the 0.2 value. Go back to the solid view. And with this selection already made for us, I'm going to click the assign button here. So you can now see we are slowly, slowly getting there with our creature. I think we can now start working on the details like the mustache for example so let me add a plane and rotate it by 90 degrees within the x-axis same procedure as with the eyes um, i'm gonna move it a little bit to the left it doesn't have to match the 3d cursor yet and well again i'm starting my modeling procedure uh, by the way i don't know why blender enables more than one gizmo if it's just transformation selected here. But anyways, we're still in beta version. So as I keep on working, you can see my viewport might become uh, a little bit crowdy uh, as in this area, for example, sometimes I want to select, I mean, I definitely want to select this vertex, but sometimes you might select something in the back by mistake and make a little bit mess around your 3D model. So what you might consider is selecting what you have just added and hitting the Shift H shortcut. So it hides everything except of your selection, same as in the object mode, basically. 
but it really helps to keep things well more organized and visible. So as with well any other modeling we do in the edit mode, I'm sickly handpicking the vertices as you can see, extruding them and trying to match what I'm creating to the image in the background. Um, sometimes you can see it, it might get a little bit blurry when we zoom in too closely. So what I suggest simply doing is trying to make this kind of shapes proportional. I think this vertex stands out a little bit. Let's maybe, um, you know what I mean. So we have a very nice smooth shape here, which looks like the mustache from the reference. Um, anyway, I will just keep on extruding and moving my vertices. So one more extrusion here. And the last one to close this object. So if I select everything, you can see I'm highlighting my shape and I can now fine tune it. Maybe move those two vertices here. I think it looks pretty good. We could yeah, just align it here. So now I can unhide everything back again. Uh, select these two vertices, merge them to the 3D cursor. So I'm changing the pivot point, S, X and zero. Now we have everything aligned to the model's center. I'm going to select everything with L key, Shift D, Escape, Control M, X and Enter. Yeah, pretty, pretty good. So now I will still uh, select those two objects and move them forward because again, they are not merged. I'm going to uh, right click and choose the remove doubles option. So as you can see those newly added details, I'm keeping them as actually, actually as separate meshes within the one object. So it makes things a little bit easier to control within a 3D viewport within the model itself. And once we keep on adding the mouth details, you can see how we can move those elements uh, forward and backward and yeah, make a pretty nice transitions and a good looking 3D model in general. So let's keep on working. I just actually thought maybe before we move to modeling the mouth, let's add one more material. So the mustache color, I'm gonna zoom in in Photoshop, press Alt and select a color that actually looks good. I think this could be it, this. Well, it's not canary yellow, but uh, gondola yellow, let's call it this way. Um, so I'm setting up a new material slot, adding a new material, call it color three, very complicated. Now I'm pasting, um, yeah, the color code again as a viewport display and also as a surface color here. Let's now switch to the solid view and we already have it selected, very nice. Clicking apply and you can see our model, another step and it starts looking pretty smooth and good. So let's maybe add a nose right now. Let's go to the edit mode, simply L click around the eye, shift D, move it. So the middle vertex, this one matches that one. We can again do it by hand. Let's just change the pivot point to the median point. So yeah, pretty, pretty quick. And again, another detail added. So now we can move to modeling the mouth. So I'm entering the edit mode. Let's maybe go a little bit more creative with the mouth. So instead of plane, let's start with a circle, rotate it by 90 degrees, scale down. And yeah, I would say let's remove these two points. Now I'm L clicking this area here. Let's move it up like that. Maybe scale within the Z axis just a little bit. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. So let's now extrude it, scale down, move it upwards, just, just like this. And I think we might need to scale these areas just a little bit. So again, I'm gonna L click shift H to hide everything. And, and actually, I think it looks pretty good. 
let's just move these two vertices a little bit upwards. Let's now apply our new material to this object. If we unhide everything in the edit mode right now, let's select it, move a little bit forward. Now I'm going to select the mustache and the mouth, hide everything else and do the Ctrl F inset faces trick again. So let's draw, I think this kind of boundary is okay, select outer and apply the black color to it. So if we enter the exit, the edit mode, I think we have a pretty, pretty good result. So adding the, the actual mouth right now is a piece of cake. We simply go back to Photoshop, just select the new color, copy the color code, go back to Blender, and yeah, let's start by creating a, the fourth and last color. Applying the color codes. And to fill this area, you could, well, simply extrude it. But you can see if we Alt left click, we have this whole edge loop selected. So we can actually go very, very simple here. I'm just creating a plane, scaling it down. Uh, let's just apply the material so we know what's happening. And you can see we can simply, since it's behind all of those uh, objects, so the mustache and the actual mouth, we can just scale it down like that and now hand adjust. I'm just gonna extrude this part just so we have a few more vertices to adjust here. And yeah, by creating this simple shape, you can see I have filled this entire area with a new color. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the base shape of our gondola 3D model is actually well done, I would say. We can now delete the reference and start fine tuning the model. You could say, well, it's actually looking pretty good. What do you want to fine tune? Um, I would start with those sharp, edgy, well, corners of our object or the feet. You can see it's pretty uh, basic so far. So from the previous video, you already know we can fix that by adding the subdivision surface modifier, but if we do it to our model, you can see we have something like this. So our gondola grew some nice hair here on top, but I don't think this is the effect we want to. And why is this happening? Because if we unhide everything, you can see in the wireframe mode, we already have an edge loop here. So the material, it looks like the material is actually leaking from the edges to the inside of the model. Well, and this is something what happens uh, if we simply use the subdivision modifier, what can I say? Um, that's because, uh, more technically speaking, because we still need one more edge loop here that would actually limit the material for leaking outside. So let me show you how it works. Um, by the way, this is the reason you don't want to set up uh, the viewport display for your materials, especially the dark ones, too dark. So if I do it like this, you can see it's pretty hard to select anything. So let's make it maybe gray. Um, anyway, I will simply press Ctrl R here and create two edge loops. So this divides uh, this part of my model into those additional, well, rows of faces and now if I select these faces and simply apply um, our main material, this one, to them, you can see it automatically fixes this color leak problem that we had. And the reason for that is it's quite simple. You can, when we go to the wireframe view, actually, you can see how dense this mesh becomes here. Uh, influenced by the subdivision surface modifier. So in order the color not to leak out, we simply need to add one row of faces and apply, um, I would call it a bound, boundary material. If I change this material to anything else, like the yellow, the yellow color um, will also leak inside. 
so that's why I'm using the main um, the main color here as the one I want to be so I want this color to be an actual boundary to this black material um, I think you know what I mean if we simply look at how this model works oops by mistake I've colorized our mustache so let's let's quickly fix that actually if, if it happens to you if we have the whole model selected I will press the C key and with my middle mouse button I will paint out the selection like this so what we have left right now is just the mustache itself let me select the yellow color and apply it so we <clears throat> we still need to fix this area and the fix will be exactly the same I'm gonna add two edge loops switch to faces hold alt and left click so I select these faces and I'm gonna apply the yellow color in this case uh, with mouth yeah let's let's do the same so again two edge loops I'm selecting this raw of faces and applying the yellow material to them so our gondola starts looking good we still need to fix the feet here because it looks now like it has some rubber shoes on as you I hope remember from the previous video a way to fix that is simply adding an extra edge loop that will as you can see um, make this area simply more sharper but I want those two edge loops to be pretty even now I'm just simply hand moving them so in order to do that you could actually actually do it exactly as I just showed you so by uh, pressing ctrl R adding an edge loop and sliding it down but you can also go to the edge mode press B select those edges now right click and subdivide them so you can see the subdivision is a little bit bent in here because it tries to follow this shape I'm gonna switch to the vertex mode deselect select those vertices here press S Z 0 enter so now we have it perfectly straight and now I'm moving both of uh, both of those edge loops downwards and I'm fixing the feet of our beautiful gondola so yeah I think it looks pretty 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 good and we can add some thickness to it before we do that let's just quickly check the face orientation so I'm in the edit mode going to overlays and clicking here so you can see the mustache and the mouth are actually not correct I'm gonna select them and press shift N and switch the inside uh, option here on so we have everything within the same color shift N within the mouth again doesn't switch so I'm clicking inside here okay so our gondola has now a correct mesh a correct geometry we can start adding thickness to it so I'm gonna go to the vertex mode I don't know why I just prefer doing it in this way from the top view you can actually see all of the layers of details we have so I'm gonna start with the body simply pressing the E key to extrude and let's go back to the object mode switch to the shade smooth and see how it all looks I think it looks pretty thick so let me add well actually two edge loops here let's just scale them within the y-axis a little bit like that and our body thick body of gondola is now well, actually pretty it's actually done to be honest let's now uh, yeah let's now do the remaining details I'm gonna start with the eyes of gondola so I'm just gonna I'll click them and by saying I'll click I'm sim what I mean is pointing my mouse cursor over as an, an object and pressing the L key on my keyboard anyways if I simply extrude them right now you can see this is the shape we have and it looks pretty nice pretty good it looks like a buttons or a chocolate uh, pieces of a cake or whatever but those faces are not visible the ones I have selected right now because they go into the body of our model so we can also delete them 
in just in case to have well lighter and more optimized geometry it's actually good to learn those things from the very beginning anyway i'm just pressing the x key and selecting delete faces what you could also notice is that the shape of the eyes changed so you can see we have this curvature uh, generated by subdivision modifier only on this side because here we have an empty well empty space and the subdivision modifier actually ends its uh, its operation here so this is also a trick sometimes if you want to make uh, part of it of an object actually sharp you can simply delete the faces uh, that would otherwise make it round but yeah let's let's repeat the same with the nose so i'm selecting it and um, yeah this is a let's keep the distance we have right now so you can see if i extrude it to this distance we have this curvature generated here but when i delete those faces it automatically becomes straight so we save both uh, we keep the geometry lightweight and we also actually model the shapes if we want so let me now move the masters just a little bit this direction and again same thing I'm extruding and just a wireframe view for preview and deleting but remember I'm deleting deleting the faces not the vertices if I delete the vertices this is what I have actually as I just did nothing so let me extrude again x to delete but we delete faces so we can see how it now looks um, very quickly doing the same for the mouth let me move it like this extrude x faces and the tongue of our gondola we can simply move it like this we don't have to extrude it because it's just a color kind of feel effect so our beautiful peaceful nice gondola is now ready uh, what I would suggest doing as a last step of modeling this beautiful creature is setting up the 3d cursor somewhere around its feet so let me select the, those vertices here and here shift s cursor to select it and now in the object mode I'm gonna right click set origin and choose the 3d cursor here by the way the gondola I've just created is also available for you to download as a 3d model from Chocofor store so visit just visit the toys category I think it's a toy is a good label for that model uh, just visit the toy category link is in the description and yeah you can just download it for free and use it in your own scenes to end this video on the positive note we will now place our gondola in some kind of environment well because that's their natural habitat they love to be placed within an environment and watch and observe it quietly just standing there so i'm just creating a plane as you can see and let's very quickly add a new shader to it so i'm just clicking a button here and well let's just call it ground um also change the base color to something brownish like this let's reduce the saturation and brightness we don't see anything as for now as you can see i can also copy the colors the same way as i do with photoshop so i just control i just hover my mouse button here and press ctrl c that's actually enough we don't have to select anything so i'm now switching to the rendered view and let's progress shift a and add a sound lamp so the sound lamp brings a little bit of new details which i think look pretty pretty cool let's rotate it just a little bit and maybe change its color to to something warm like that we can reduce the strength just a little bit and also play around with the shadows so you can see if we switch on the contact shadows the eyes of our gondola actually cast shadow is it good is it bad i don't know i think it's not that bad 
So if, once we set up those very, very basic things, we can also click this icon here, which is called world and change the background color to something more interesting. So let's maybe choose something like that. And if we turn off the overlays, um, I would say we already have pretty aesthetic, minimalistic image. Um, let's add a camera and see what we can achieve. So I will add one more 3D viewport to my Blender layout by clicking this icon here. And this will help me navigating my camera. Um, so I'm gonna press Shift A right now, add a camera. Let's enable the overlays again. And I'm gonna press Alt R to zero its rotation to something like this. Now I'm gonna press R, X, and hold the control button again as with the references. So we have our camera aligned straight like this. Now with my camera selected, I'm gonna press control numpad zero. And yeah, you can see this is what our camera will see as for now. So let's just move it a little bit back. And for the first time, we'll now adjust the camera settings a little bit. So for this nice panoramic view, I will change the focal length to the values you use in photography. So let's say 130 millimeters, that's a, a tele lens, the one you can use in sport, for example. Um, when you play around with the settings here, for, uh, for example, when we go to the viewport display, yes. You can see if we adjust this slider, uh, the background becomes darker and we are e well, we can frame our scene easier this way. So you can make it fully black and transparent. I like to keep it at 0.75 maybe. Um, yeah, let's play around with the sun just a little bit now and see what happens. I think the setting we had before is pretty good. Let's maybe add something to the background. So I'm gonna leave the camera view by pressing the middle mouse button, go back to the side view, Go to wireframe, add a plane, rotate by 90 degrees again within the X axis. And now in the edit mode, I'm gonna select an edge here and I'm gonna extrude it very freely, just as you can see. So you might be wondering what's happening and I'm just creating something that I hope will look uh, like a mountain, like mountains in the background. I'm now selecting to the vertices uh, holding Alt key and left clicking. So we select this bottom row, S, Z, zero, enter. So now we have everything nicely aligned. Um, I'm now inverting the selection. You can see the shortcut here and just moving it downwards. When I scale within the Z axis, you can also see I'm able to enhance the look, um, but I think it's pretty okay. Let's move it to the background just like this. Switch back to the camera view by pressing the numpad zero and we can now scale the mountains up and down move them downwards just a little bit and maybe rotate let's see how it looks in the rendered view um yeah i think it's pretty good let's adjust the material right now so i'm gonna again press new here let's call it mountains and change the base color to to something that we look, uh, <laughs> sorry, to something that we actually like. So maybe, maybe something like this. Let's keep this image within these brownish tones, maybe. I will now select the mountains again, go to the edit mode and extrude them within the Y axis. I don't know for how long. We can move this newly selected, newly extruded faces up and down. Maybe let's move them up actually. Um, this looks pretty pretty cool. I'm gonna right click within this viewport and set origin to geometry So now I can rotate the mountains as well Let's maybe move them like that And yeah, let's now see what happens if we adjust the Sun as well So you can see this really gives us a lot of creativity um, you can see this nice shadow appearing here you can maybe now rotate gondola as well just a little bit so the colors we have set up before actually match 
uh, what what we see in our camera. Um, I will maybe reduce the energy of the sun a little bit. We can also very quickly change the mood of the entire image by simply changing the color of the sun. So now it looks like it's, well, dusk outside, I think. Um, maybe let's keep this image in this kind of look. I would try to add a few more interesting details. So I'm gonna switch to the wireframe view here, move my 3D cursor, let's say, to this area. And I'm gonna create additional light source. It's gonna be point lamp. So you can see it looks pretty, pretty interesting. Gives us this nice effect. Let's move it closer to our gondola and edit the color to something more warm like this. Um, I'm gonna decrease the power maybe. Yeah, let's let's keep it as three. I think it looks cool. And we're gonna create a small campfire. Um, I'm I still want to show you a pretty interesting trick. So to very quickly create rocks around our campfire, let's just rotate a single cube like this maybe make it a bit smaller and let's add some color color it a rock choose something brownish creamy as we already have in the scene so yeah let's let's keep it like this now i will select the cube and using the alt d or actually you can use shift d because it's a very easy object i will just duplicate it multiple times like that. So you can see we have exactly the same rotation scale and everything within our cubes, which doesn't look that interesting. But under the F3 key, we have something called a help menu. So here you can actually type any Blender command you want and your Blender will find it for you. Let's type random here and you can see we have a randomized transfer option available. When I click it, we have this new window popping up here. So I can randomize the rotation, let's type 180 of my selected objects here. If I increase the scale to let's say two, you can see they are all deformed. I think it's a little bit too much. So let's use 1.3 value here. And let's also type 180 everywhere here. So you can see in this very quick way, we were able to well, create something that looks like a campfire. We can still change the uh, pivot points to individual origins. And when I press the S right now, we are actually scaling them, our rocks up and down. So let's, let's keep them like this and go back to the camera view. I think it looks pretty, pretty funny and interesting. As two final touches to our scene, I would just add a few clouds and the fire. So let's start with the fire. Um, I'm going to enable the overlays and create a plane within the 3D cursor, rotate traditionally within the X axis by 90 degrees. Let's actually go to the rendered view maybe. Um, I'm going to Sorry, I just switched to the wireframe. Just really want to speed up because I know this video is getting long already. So um, yeah, let's just do it quickly. As you can see, I'm simply extruding uh, the vertices randomly, but I want to create something that looks like a flame. So let's say, let's pretend it looks like a flame for us. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna select those two vertices connect them by pressing F, now S, Z, zero. And I'm gonna press Alt F here to fill everything with new faces. I don't know if this shortcut was already presented. So uh, Alt F for filling the entire selection. And now getting back to the rendered view, I'm gonna set up a new material. So maybe let's switch to the camera. Um, let's create material which is called fire and change its color to something orange or that looks pretty hot. Um, yeah, so we've disabled the overlays. You can see we have this pretty, pretty nice look again. I'm actually, I'm actually quite surprised it looks that good uh, just by, as you can see, we are simply freely modeling and moving stuff around. So let's now move to the clouds. I'm gonna create them again, you can guess already. 
with adding a plane. So plane R X 90. I'm going to move it here and it's going to be pretty much the same as I did with the mountains. So maybe I will just scale this edge up, extrude it once here, once here. And, and yeah, once like that. Um, let's go to the rendered view and move our cloud somewhere here. Maybe when it casts shadow, then the image becomes even more interesting. So I'm extruding it here, as you can see. I will also add one edge loop here in the middle and press S to scale it up. So we have this interesting shape. Right click to send the origin to the center of the object. I will rotate it right now to see if we get anything interesting. Who knows, maybe. Um, let's also change the color. Let's call it cloud. And yeah, again, change to something. Maybe a little bit yellow. And make it, yeah, make it like that. I think it's, <laughs> I think it's pretty, pretty cool. Um, let's just move it here and let's duplicate it and modify this new cloud just a little bit, scale it down. Let's maybe move it 180 degrees. And now I'm going to enter the edit mode and simply select those edge loops, scale them within the Z axis, just so we have a different shape of a cloud. And I will now scale it down. I think this shadow doesn't look good, so let me maybe move it. You can see I can move it somewhere here and now scale it up again. So we have a feeling that it's actually as close as this one. I think I will also move this cloud maybe, maybe here somewhere. So it adds some additional shadow, but just within the mountain. Let's keep this area here uh, nice and clean as it is. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Pretty cool, actually. So, yeah, we have a final image. Um, one last thing I would like you to explore a little bit yourself. If we go to the render settings here, you can see we have color management settings here uh, near the bottom. And by switching the, the settings here, by playing with them around, you can actually uh, do some kind of post processing directly in Blender. So once you set up the colors and everything, you can now play around with the final look of the image. Uh, increase the contrast, for example. But when you switch to the default here and go to the look right now, you can see we have all of those different camera looks, um, which, yeah, can significantly change the look of what you just set up. Uh, I think it's a very, very good way of exploring Blender, uh, playing around with your creativity, increasing it this way. Um, I think those kind of easy setups that we do in our um, beginner's course are the, I would say, the best way to, to train your creativity and, you know, explore things you can actually do in Blender. So you can see right now I'm just playing around with the color settings of the sun, which can really drastically change what we have just set up. If I only adjust the background right now, we have a completely different image. So yeah, as always, guys, thank you for watching this video. Um, I really encourage you to play around, to check out the link in the video description, where I also have listed out all of the shortcuts to this part of the course. And I really want to thank all of you for sticking out for the past 20 videos because, well, it's been a long road, but I think, uh, I think if you followed closely, I think you are now fully able to create what I, what I have just done here within this one hour video. Um, this will be the last video from the actual beginner's course, the, the complete beginner's course, because right now, if you have a skills to create scenes like that, you're no, definitely uh, not an absolute beginner any longer. In the upcoming videos, we will now move to 
learning more about the materials, about the way shaders, textures and stuff like this works in Blender, we will learn a little bit more about the renderings themselves. And later on, I will focus more on creating little images like the one here. Um, maybe doing some video compilations with all of the shortcuts we have just learned throughout those past 20 videos. So yeah, again, I really, I'm really thankful for sticking out with me throughout all those videos. I really hope you learned a lot. Feel free leaving your comments below. And if you're new to this channel, you're just watching this video, I really uh, encourage you to check out Blender because it's a free software that allows you creating amazing stuff and which really boosts your creativity. But yeah, this video is long enough. Thank you guys and girls, everyone for watching and see you in the next Chocofer video. Bye bye.